Deepsea just released their newest model, version 3.2, and it's smarter than the $20 a month premium model that you are currently paying for, and they released it for free. As of this morning, DeepSeek 3.2 is officially the first open source model in history to score a gold medal at the International Math Olympiad. It's beating GPT-5 High, it's matching Gemini 3 Pro, and the scariest part for the big tech giants is the budget. DeepSeek did this on a fraction of the hardware for a fraction of the cost using a new architecture that changes the economics of AI completely. So if you're a business owner, a developer, or just someone still paying $20 a month for ChatGPT, then you need to pay attention because the premium product that you're buying just became free. So let's break it down. For the last two years, we've been told that if you want a smarter model, you need to build a $100 billion data center, buy every H100 GPU on Earth, and then brute force the math. That was the moat. That's why OpenAI and Google and the rest of the AI cartel felt safe. DeepSeek 3.2, though, just destroyed that moat. DeepSeek 3.2 comes in two flavors, but the one that is causing panic in Silicon Valley is the 3.2 Special Reasoning Model. This is their System 2 thinker, their direct answer to OpenAI's reasoning series. And when we look at the benchmarks, it's effectively maxing out the tests. On the AIME 2025 benchmark, which is the critical test for mathematical reasoning, DeepSeek Special hits 96%. To put that into perspective, Gemini 3 Pro sits at 95% and GPT-5 high is estimated at 94.6%. But, and this is an important point for anyone looking to build with this to know about, look at the token count. To get that 96%, the DeepSeek special model burns a massive amount of inference compute, which just means that it thinks longer to get the right answer. It generates thousands of internal thought tokens before it prints a single word of the final answer. The regular DeepSeq 3.2 model, on the other hand, is insanely efficient. It matches GPT-5 High's general reasoning capabilities, but runs on a fraction of the resources. On GPQA Diamond, which is the PhD-level hard science benchmark, we see the same story. DeepSeq is pushing the algorithm side harder than anyone else, while OpenAI is trying to scale with brute force. So, how do they do it? How did a lab with a fraction of Google's budget beat them at their own game? Well, to understand this, we have to talk about the biggest bottleneck in AI today, which is the context trap. For the last year, models haven't really been stuck at small context windows, right? We've had 1 million and 2 million context windows from Gemini and GPT-5 for a while, but we've been stuck with expensive context. Here's the problem with the traditional architecture behind Gemini 3 and GPT-5. It's that the cost scales quadratically. Think of it like a dinner party. If you have 10 guests and everyone needs to shake hands with everyone else to know them, that's about 45 handshakes. Easy. But if you invite 100 guests, which is only 10 times more people, you don't get 10 times the handshakes, you get nearly 5,000 handshakes. If you invite 1,000 guests, you're looking at 500,000 interactions. See that explosion? Every time you double the context length, the computational cost doesn't double, it quadruples which is why running a 1 million token prompt on GPT-5 costs you a lot. The model is forced to shake hands with every single token, comparing every word to every other word, even if they have nothing to do with each other. It's wasteful, it's slow, and it bankrupts the GPU. Enter DeepSeek's new invention, DeepSeek Sparse Attention. Without getting too boring, this literally rewrites the math so that the cost curve stops exploding. Instead of the dinner party where everybody shakes hands with everyone, DSA uses a lightning indexer. Imagine a party where there is a master coordinator at the door. When a new guest arrives, the coordinator instantly points them to the three specific people that they need to talk to. You're a physicist, go talk to those three scientists. You're a lawyer, go talk to the judge in the corner. You skip 99% of the useless interactions. This changes the math from quadratic to near linear which means that we can finally have massive book length context windows without the massive compute tax, which is the difference between an AI that is a cool toy that costs $5 per query and an AI that is a profitable employee that costs five cents per query. But efficiency is only really half the story. The other half is agency. We don't just want models that can answer questions like a smart encyclopedia, we want models that can do jobs, right? We want agents. And DeepSeek realized that the bottleneck to building agentic models was, well, us, humans. You would prefer the human race to endure, right? Uh, 
Humans are slow, expensive, and inconsistent at labeling data. We make mistakes, we get tired. So DeepSeek fired the humans and built a massive synthetic data pipeline. They created 1,800 distinct virtual environments. Think of these like video game levels for AI. Some levels are coding environments where the AI has to build a website. Some are server terminals where it has to fix a Linux bug. Some are logic puzzles. They generated 85,000 complex tasks inside these simulations. And instead of teaching the AI by showing it a textbook, which is how we train GPT-4 or 5, they taught it by throwing it into a simulation and letting it fail millions of times until it learned to succeed. This is why on Live Codebench, the 3.2 special model hits an elite 88.7%, because it actually understands the logic of debugging because it has actually lived through thousands of simulated coding challenges where it has had to fix its own errors to pass the level. And this brings us to the final piece of their secret sauce, reinforcement learning. Historically, reinforcement learning was an afterthought, the cherry on top to make the model polite and safe. DeepSeek flipped the script and spent over 10% of their total compute budget just on post-training reinforcement learning. This is huge because it means that they're training it to reason, and is why the thinking models are so effective. They're effectively running on a mental simulation, checking their work, criticizing their own logic, and rewriting their internal draft before they give you an answer. Okay, so that sounds incredible in theory, but we don't just want to trust the benchmarks, we want to actually test it for ourselves. So we're going to put Deep C 3.2 special through the gauntlet. I've designed tests specifically to break smart AIs. All right, so the first thing that we're going to give it is a mathematically impossible to solve puzzle. So let's just paste it right here. And essentially, this is asking it if it's possible to solve this thing in four moves. Um, it is not possible. But we're just going to see if this thing can figure it out. Uh, I have tried it on the dumber model and it was able, it was not able to figure it out. So let's just see if having deep think on it, it can do it. So let's just give it a shot. So as it's reasoning through this, we can sort of see its thought process. And right now we've got a, it says, but wait, we only considered sequences of exactly four pores and just needs to verify. And then it goes into finding out. So it seems impossible to reach um, this in four pores. And then it's just going to double check. But uh, so far, so good. And we have our answer. It is impossible to achieve exactly six liters in both of these in four pores. That's great. All right, so here we are on Gemini. We're just going to give it the same prompt, add canvas, and then press go. And just for fun, let's do it on ChatGPT 5 as well. All right, as expected, Gemini 3 Pro uh, came to the same conclusion. It is impossible. They are also getting it correct. So now for the next one, we're going to test that sparse attention breakthrough that we were talking about before with a needle in a haystack type of test. So we have the entire uh, text of the book War and Peace, which is like a classically long ass book. And we're just going to give it a secret code right here. I don't know if you can see it, but the secret code to the vault is blueberry pancakes 99. And then the prompt that I'm going to give it is what is the secret code to the vault? Uh, so I'm just going to paste in this text and we can see how it goes. Bam. And look at that. It thought for eight seconds and it came out with blueberry pancakes 99, which is <laughs> which is the correct answer. So that's incredible. So what does this actually mean for the industry? Well, it means that the intelligence moat is gone. For the last few years, OpenAI and Google have had a monopoly on smart. If you want the best reasoning, you had to rent it from them. You had to pay their prices. You had to abide by their API limits. DeepSeek 3.2 just proved that smart can be open sourced. It can be efficient and it can be run on a fraction of the budget. If I'm Sam Altman, I am terrified of this chart because if an open source lab can match your flagship model using fewer chips, smarter math and zero subscription fees, what exactly are people paying $20 a month for? Go try the model. The distilled version runs on consumer hardware and the API is live right now. Let me know in the comments if this is the moment that you finally cancel your ChatGPT subscription or not. And as always, thank you for watching. Hit like if you found this useful and subscribe for more videos like this. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.